that was worth the price of admission, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Thank you to Miss Pat Bendits and Linda McFerrin for their work with these children uh, these past three weeks. Great job. I tell you, most of the time you get kids up there and they just all start playing, you know. But you can tell they knew they knew how to do this. And, and Rachel, there's your future bell players right there. That, that's a, a great job. And thank you to these ladies who uh, I'm sure at times have endured and uh, but have, have uh, really stuck with this and uh, gotten these children ready. Fantastic. Hey, you know, um, I was reading this week about. Um, the fact that a 15-year-old is suing her parents because her parents grounded her. And she's got a petition on Twitter in, in, order to, uh, uh, in, in order to state her case. And she's gotten more sympathy than you would like to think she would have gotten on Twitter. But I, I will say that most of what uh, she has received back on Twitter has not been in her favor has been in favor of her parents. I was thankful to see that. I didn't, of course, didn't read all of them because there were thousands. But uh, I, you know, there were there were things that people uh, told told her. And, and, and one being, thank God that you have parents who care about how you act or don't act, and uh, and, and that is something to, to be uh, thankful for. And and uh, but but at the same time, you know, we may not have sympathy for her today, but. I'm not so sure we shouldn't uh, just sit down and cry a little bit for parents today who are trying to raise up their kids in a digital age, right? It, it can be pretty daunting. I mean, parenting's never been easy, and I don't think it's gotten any easier by, by any means. In fact, I think a lot of the challenges have just amped up uh, beyond our imagination. Uh, today and you know, and, but here's the thing: we can sit and and kind of shudder in this place today. We can, you know, and and and, and act fearful and be fearful about the future of children. You know, I look at not not our, our children, but our grandchildren now, and I think about what the future is going to look like for them. And we can sit here in fear today, or we can have confidence. In our, in our God who never changes. That, that, that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That our times are changing, but our God is not. Now, this is not going to be the main text that I'm speaking of today. In fact, if you want to turn your Bibles, you can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's going to be up on your screen, and I hope you will, and I hope you'll follow along. But I do want to mention this when, when we think about mothers and we think about women in the home. Proverbs 31 says this, Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? She looks at what's coming down the pike, and instead of shuddering in fear, she, she laughs at it. She has confidence about what is coming. And then those words at the end of Psalm 30, or excuse me, Proverbs 31, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And it is in that fear of the Lord that we can have confidence today. It is in the fear of the Lord that we can have faith in the Lord today and, and, and have trust in Him. So, we, we, we look not, we, we don't sit here today as a people hunkered down, frightened, fearful, but we sit here today in absolute confidence before the Lord. Jesus Christ said that if you build your house on the sand, you can expect that it will fall. But if you build your house on the rock, which is the Word of God, whoever, whoever hears these words of mine and obeys them, Jesus said, will be as one who builds their house on the rock. And the, the, st the storm comes, the wind blows, and the house stands. The house stands because it is built on the rock. It is built on the firm foundation. So listen, we're not a people who are frightened about what is coming, but we are people who look with confidence at what is in front of us, and we, we understand that our God is sufficient for the day, right? Amen? Amen. And, and so, uh, yes, we can feel sorry for parents today, or we can say, hey, listen, this is just a greater opportunity for God to be glorified in the time in which we live. 
And, and, and I, I want us to think for just a moment about in this time, how do we train up children and, 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 and how do we spiritually train children in the time in which we live. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And the Bible is consistent all the way through. But the Bible doesn't say just a ton about parenting. What it does say, though, is very direct. And what it does say is very consistent. What Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, train them up and, 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 and bring them up in the instruction of the Lord. The Lord, the God spoke through Moses in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter six, and, and, and the children of, and, and the circumstances of Deuteronomy chapter six, in many ways, mirror the circumstances in which we live today. The children of Israel had been taken out of Egypt. They had spent 40 years in the desert and the wilderness. And now they're getting ready to go over into the promised land. And God is warning them. Read the book of Deuteronomy in that light. In the light of, here are people who are going into a hostile territory. They're going into a place that they're going to have to conquer, essentially. They're going into a place where the people there do not share what they believe. They do not share their, the, the beliefs of, of the children of Israel. They do not, they do not share in, in, the, in the, the worldview of the children of Israel. And we go out into a world today that does not share our worldview. As, as Gail was saying about the, the, the little girl, you know, who's already been taught, you're brainwashed because you talk about Jesus Christ. And, I mean, we, that, that's becoming more and more prevalent around us. Than, than, and and, and what, we, what we find is we go out into a world that does not share our worldview. Just the children of Israel went into a place that did not share their worldview. And how are you going to carry on the faith? How are you going to carry on in Christ in the middle of all of that? And Deuteronomy chapter 6 gives us a picture of that. Now I'm going to read the first several verses in that chapter and then we're going to take just a moment to, to highlight some things that I think will help us when we think about how do we bring up how do we bring up our children in this age in which we live. So we begin, verse 1, Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me, this is Moses speaking, commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, and you and your son, listen, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply to look greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, and a land flowing with milk and honey. And I want you to know that God was not telling them, you're just simply telling them you're going into a hostile land. He's telling them you're going into a great land. You're going into a land that I'm giving to you. In fact, this land is already yours, though you're not even there yet. And we scratch our head and say, how could that be? And, and, and it's the same for us, though, isn't it? We've already been told that we are victorious in Christ. We are already told that we do not have to sit back in fear. But at the same time that we're told this, we're warned that if you're not careful, you'll be, you will be swallowed up in this land in which you go, into which you go. Anybody feel swallowed up sometimes in the, in the work world? Anybody feel swallowed up in, in, in just out in the culture in general? And what we need to understand, folks, is that we are, we are already victorious in Christ, and yet there are some things that God tells us that we must do if we're going to not only thrive ourselves, but our children and our children's children thrive in this culture, in this world that we live in today. Now, how do we bring up our children in this age? Verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. And 
What is he saying here? He is saying we're going to bring up our children in this age. We must teach them personally. Now, by personally, I mean out of our own personal walk with the Lord. Through the years, one of the things, one of the pitfalls I've seen in families is a, is a people who bring their kids to church and in church the children are taught this is, a, this is the way you're supposed to do it and this is how you're supposed to act, but they go home and everything looks starkly different. It doesn't mirror what they're being taught in, in, in the church. It doesn't mirror what we are trying to expose them to in the church, but instead quite the opposite. And what I, what I believe this is saying to us as moms and dads and grandparents, those of us who have influence on children, we must first have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And by that I don't mean, well, I got saved when I was in Bible school when I was eight years old. I'm talking about you're walking with the Lord now. You're living this out now. We are not just told, we are, we, are, we are told that we are to abide in Christ, that this is to be our lives and how we live out our lives every day. And, and, and don't children spot phonies right away. How many parents just in the last month have been called on the carpet by your kids because you, you, know, you maybe said one thing and you did another? Right? And there aren't any perfect parents in this world. And just ask my kids. I wasn't one of I wasn't one either. But at the same time, you know what? Your kids know when you're consistently living this out. If, if, you're, if, if you're not living this out, then how are you going to how are you going to give away what you don't have? Right? And so I would just say to you, teach them personally. You know the, the proverb that we often quote, bring up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And, and, uh, and, and people, I've heard people kind of turn that around and say, bring up a child in the way he should go, and go there yourself every now and then. But I would say, even that doesn't capture. Bring up a child in the way he should go. And you live there. Don't just go there. You live there. This is, this is who we are. It's not what we go to. We don't go to church. We are the church. We don't, we don't, go, to, we don't, we don't go to Christian things. We are Christians. We are Christians. We live this out. And I would just say to you, parents, I, I, I say to you, if you're not walking with the Lord... I mean, do your children see your Bible open? Do your children see, do they hear, have they heard you pray? Have they, have, do your children know that this is not just something you're trying to give them that you don't own yourself? I encourage you, go there, teach them personally. And then, and then we read, you shall teach them diligently to your children. And, and so the word here, you teach them personally, but you teach them typically. In other words, diligent means, means consistent or typical. If you're diligent in something, you're consistent. You, that's, it's what's typical of your life. And I just wonder when your children look at when your children look back on home, what are they going to say was typical of your home? I'm not talking about, you know, yeah, there are those moments when we all falter and we fail and we blow it, but I'm talking about what's typical of your home. What will they say? What will your children say was the typical direction, the typical things that happen? What will they remember about your faith and your walking with the Lord? Teach them typically. In other words, be consistent, be diligent in what you teach them. The, the prophet Isaiah, speaking for the Lord, says he tells us everything over and over, one line at a time, one line at a time, a little here and a little there. And, and, and you, some of you will remember it will remember it this way. It is precept upon precept. It is line upon line. Right? It is teaching them typically. It's continuing to pour into them. Listen, I hear people say sometimes, you know, my, my kids are, are bored because they're teaching, they, they're hearing the same things in Sunday school that they heard three years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, 
I don't know about you, but if, if, I, if somebody doesn't teach me over and over again, I don't get it. And they don't either. And we need to be consistent and we need to, and we need to be diligent in the way that we teach of our children. And notice it says, and shall talk of them. Teach conversationally. That, that, Pour into their life. God calls us not to just in, in recite the instructions, but to talk of them. You know, all around us, we have so many opportunities to speak into the lives of our children and to speak conversationally into the lives of our children. And, 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 and faith is caught and not just taught. And there are thousands of illustrations around us every day. Even the bad things that are happening around us are opportunities for us to teach our children. And so I would just say, speak, speak it. Let it be a part of your conversation day in and day out. You know, I think most parents who are living in what we're talking about here would say one of the best places for that to happen is in the car, right? Or the minivan, or the SUV. Or the wheelbarrow, or whatever. I don't know. You know, but but that you have a you have kind of a, a a captive audience, and they're all around us. There are opportunities to speak into the lives of our children. And then, verse seven: You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And I think this is just a call for us to teach them creatively. Teach them creatively. You know, there, there are so many opportunities. You know, we, we, we get fearful of this digital age, but this digital age also gives us a ton of opportunities to speak into the lives of our children. I know, uh, you know, I, I, I get into my daughter's car or, or van sometimes and, and play our, our, our Christian memory songs. And I, I asked her what the, 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 the name of that was. Seeds Family Worship. Anybody else use that? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a worship song. It's things for the children just to learn. To, and many of them are hymns, right? Just uh, Some of them are hymns that, that they learn, such as that. We say we want our kids to learn some of the old songs. Well, there, there are some of the old and there's some of the new. I know uh, Jimmy and uh, Sabrina uh, made us use slugs and bugs and uh, Jimmy was trying to tell me what that is all about. I, that sounds sounds great to me, you know, slugs and bugs. But it's a it's a group that that teaches children, and there are, there are CDs and or MP3s. There are things you can download, and you know we've got Bluetooth. And we've got all those opportunities, things that we can play through our speakers, speakers of our vehicles, and, and in, in our homes. And and I just encourage you to teach them creatively. I would just encourage your parents, go on, go online and, and uh, just look up children's Bible trivia or teenagers' Bible trivia. There are tons of things that are out there. And I know we say this digital age is taking us down the tube, but I'm telling you, this digital age is also giving us tons of opportunities to pour into the lives of our children that once were not there at our fingertips but that are there now. Teach them creatively. You know, you don't have to bore kids to teach them. And, and, and I, I encourage your parents and you, and, and how many of you learned more than your kids when you've been teaching your kids, right? I know when our children were in Bible drill, we learned the, the verses with them because we're helping them. We're assisting them. We're driving down the road and they're reciting the Bible verses to us. So there are just so many opportunities. And I tell you, parents, that to be creative. Take, take the opportunity that you have to be creative in this, in this world in which we live. And then we read, You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And I think this is just saying, teach them openly. Put it out there in front of them. Scripture verses in their, in their bedrooms, on the walls of the house. Things that are out there in front of them. What, don't, don't be ashamed of the gospel in your home, in your life, in your work, in every waking hour. 
how you decorate your house, how you decorate your life, scripture models, pictures, all kinds of things that can lead our children toward Jesus Christ. Now, I think you kind of sum all this up by saying teach them intentionally. If you're going to teach your children, you're going to have to be intentional. You're going to have to make, you're going to have to put, build it into your life. It's not, it, yeah, it can come really natural to some people, but I'm telling you, if you're not intentional, life will swallow up all your time, right? And I would just encourage you, and, and I would say to you, start young. <coughs> start young, but if it's too late to start young, repent and start now. Seriously. I mean, you might need to go to your children and say, you know what, this hasn't been a part of who we are. But it's who we should be, who we want to be, who I think it's who we really want to be. And can we just repent together and ask the Lord to help us to build this into our lives and into our homes right now? And, 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 and wherever you are on that continuum as a parent, it's never too late to say to your kids, you know what, Let, as we're, let, let's follow the Lord. Let's walk with the Lord Jesus. Let's live this out. And let's pour this into our lives and make this central for our lives. That we follow God's foundation for our family. And that we let Him, and that we let Him guide us into that right now. I'm going to ask you as Becky comes and plays at the piano for just a moment. We're going to go to the Lord right now in prayer. And, um, you know, I, I wonder if there might, wonder if there are parents here today who would just say, you know what, we, we want, we desire to lead our children in this direction. And we want to make this commitment before the Lord, this altar is a place for you to come and, and pray together. Or you might just reach over and take one another by the hand say, you know what, we, we want to do this in the Lord right now. And, and use this time as a time of commitment and prayer. Maybe you look back on your life and you say, you know what, I, I just see where I, I lost so many opportunities. And, and you know, one of the hardest things about parenting is, is the, are the regrets. Right? The guilt. I mean, we all we all did well in some places. We blew it in some places. And sometimes even when you got it perfectly right, you still, you still sit and double clutch. You, you question yourself about, did I, did I do what is right? Did I do what is best? Where did I fail? Did I take the opportunities I should have taken? I would just encourage you right now to take all that to the Lord. Ask Him to bring healing to your heart, healing to your family. In this room are many broken families. Families that are hurting. Families that are struggling. Would you just bow right now? Would you just pray and ask God to bring healing to our lives and to our homes? Jimmy is in our, our youth pastor is going to be right back here in this corner to my right, your left close the service. I'll be here to pray with you and anyone who would like to pray. I wonder if maybe there are couples here today, maybe you don't have children yet, but you, you, you pray to, you plan to. Would you just commit yourself right now to having a home where you, you pass to your children and even to your children's children, the torch of faith. <coughs> bringing them up as this passage instructs us. Father, we pray for our homes. As we sang earlier, God, give us Christian homes. Not simply in name, but Christian homes and practices of our lives and the way we live in our lives day in and day out. I pray, Lord, that we would pass down to our children and our children's children what we ourselves have received and are living out 
God, help us to look at our own lives today and realize that, that a fake faith is such a stumbling block. God, I pray for that dad, that mom in this room who just who needs to revisit what it means to walk with you. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to be diligent, consistent, pouring into the, the lives of our families. We live in such a fragmented world, Lord. It's so hard to be consistent. But I pray that you will help us to take control of our lives and our families and our time to Say no to those things that are that do not honor you. And the way we use our time and the time of our family. And that we would make paramount such things as Bible drill. Such things as, 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 as the opportunities you've, as, that you've given to us to pour into the lives of our children. Help us to speak up, Lord, to speak of these things, to talk of them. Help us, Lord, to be creative. Even those of us who are not so much when it comes to creativity. God, help us to think through these things. To let you guide us into them. To network with other parents. To find those parents who are doing this well and intentionally. And to learn from each other to support each other in, in, parent, in the parenting life, the grandparenting life of today. And Lord, help us to teach openly, unashamedly. May it be all over our lives in every way possible so that we can uh, be open about our faith to our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, lovingly, graciously open about what it means to follow you. And I just pray, Lord, in all of this, you help us to be intentional. Help us to not let life pass us by before we suddenly wake up to the opportunity that has been afforded to us. Help us now, right now. Help that parent right now. Help that grandparent right now. Help us as a church, Lord. Thank you for the people in this church who pour into the lives of children many of, of whom their, their parents do not, do not come and with them when they come to us. Many to whom we are the Christian influence in their lives, Lord. Thank you for our Wednesday night people, our basketball people, our, our, our all of these people who are pouring into the lives of children on so many different levels here at Beach Grove, God, help us to be that influence in the lives of children. Raise up parents, Lord, to be foster parents to these children we've spoken of today. Help us, Lord, to recognize the opportunity to make an impact and make a difference in the lives of the of little ones that you have entrusted to us. And may we be obedient, Lord, as you have said to as you said to the parents of your time, let the little children come to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a happy day, a wonderful day, a joyful day, regardless of your life situation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we give this day unto Him, and may God bless you as you go out.